ancient travellers left behind their golden travel accounts in the form of travelogues for the future generations to read, learn and delight. We bring those to you in our audio series, Travelogues in Time. In today's edition, we have the second part of the travel accounts of Jean-Baptiste Trevignier, the French traveller who visited India in the 17th century. In the first part, we dwelt on the custom of reverence and veneration of animals and a detailed description of Shahanabad city of Delhi constructed by Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan. The script is by Professor P.T. Haridas, member Indian Council for Historical Research and presented by Kaushik Roy. Over to Kaushik Roy. The throne of the king was placed in the middle of this hall when the king enters and gives audience and to render justice. It was in the form of a court bedstead supported by four legs. It had a canopy and in the back a bolster and counterpane beautifully covered with diamonds. We have no idea whether the author is referring to the peacock throne of Shah Jahan. When the king is seated on the throne, some great nobles stand by him. In most cases, there were his own children between 11 o'clock and noon. The Nawab, who was the first minister of state, comes to make a report of whatever had passed in the first court. On completion of his speech, the king rises and from the time the king seats himself on his throne till he rises, nobody, whosoever he may be, was allowed to leave the palace. Towards the middle of the same court, there was a small channel of about six inches wide. When the king was on his throne, all strangers who were present to meet the king would stop here. Nobody was allowed to cross the line without permission and even ambassadors were not exempted. The officer in charge immediately informed the Divan and the Secretary of State informed the King about it and permission was granted for meeting the King. From the Hall of the Divan there is a passage on the left to a terrace from where we can see the river Yamuna. To the left of this court there is a small well-built mosque, the dome of which is fully covered with lead. The King went to this mosque for his daily prayers except Friday. He used to go to the Grand Mosque on Fridays. Thevenia has given a beautiful description of Agra also. This was the largest town in India and was formerly the residence of kings. The houses of the nobles were beautiful and well built, but those of private persons were not good enough for dwelling. All houses were separated from one another and were concealed by the height of walls for fear of seeing their women by others. The remarkable structures at Agra were the palace of the king and some beautiful tombs near the town and in the environs. The palace of the king was a considerable enclosure with a double wall. This was terraced in some place and above the wall some dwellings were constructed for the use of certain officers of the court. River Yamuna flows in front of the palace. The first gate of the palace where the dwelling of the governor was situated is a long and dark arch. After that a large court surrounded by porticos can be seen. The gallery which is opposite is larger and higher than the others and is sustained by three rows of columns and under those there were many chambers for the soldiers of the guard. Of all the tombs at Agra, that of his wife Shah Jahan was the most splendid. He purposely constructed it near the Tassimakan, where all foreigners came so that the whole world could see and admire its magnificence. The Tassimakan was a large bazaar consisting of six large courts all surrounded with porticos. Under these porticos were chambers for merchants and an enormous quantity of cotton were sold there. The tomb of this begum is at the east end of the town by the side of the river in a great square surrounded by walls upon which there is a small gallery. This square was a kind of garden divided into compartments. We enter into the square through a large gate. A little away in the middle of the square there are three great elevated platforms one upon the other. There are four towers at the four corners. There is a dome above covered with white marble. Under this dome there is an empty tomb. The Begum was interred under a vault which is beneath the first platform. It took 22 years during which 20,000 men worked incessantly for the completion of this magnificent work. It is to be noted that Thevenia 
has not mentioned the names of the Begum that is Mumtaz Mahal and the tomb which is Taj Mahal. Other major towns in India like Allahabad, Banaras, Goa, Patna, Dhaka, etc. are also mentioned by Thavania. You have just heard the second part of the travel accounts of Jean Baptista Thavania, the French traveller who visited India in the 17th century. The script was by Professor P. T. Haridas, member Indian Council for Historical Research and presented by Kaushik Roy. Travelogs in time. Travelogs in time.